Dear brothers, the general definitely uh, prepared uh, a draft of the charismatic declaration that uh, was uh, uh, decided by the general definitory in uh, Goa this year. We uh, sent this text to all the circumscriptions so that you can uh, uh, read the text and compare it with your living experience. We expect your reaction so that you can help us uh, in this uh, task that we consider very important for the future of the order. It's with uh, a lot of joy and passion that we are uh, collaborating with you. It's uh, a way of uh, uh, preparing together um, the future of our order, reflecting upon our identity, our, this wonderful vocation that we received from God. Brothers, in September you received the working draft of the Charismatic Declaration that was sent to you from the center of the order and is to be an important part of the provincial chapters. The purpose of the Charismatic Declaration is to reformulate the essential elements of the Tresian Charism in the light and the context of the time. It's important for us to keep in mind that this is a working draft. It is not the final document and it invites serious reading, reflection, sharing, critique, and, and additions. If there's any other additions, any anything uh, that you would like to add to, to the document. The document is divided into five parts. The first part reminds us that our call to religious life as Discalced Carmelites is a gift from God and the work of the Holy Spirit. The second section deals with formation and charismatic identity. And it reminds us as well that formation is a lifelong process, a lifelong process that takes place in life, particularly in community life, and that we're always growing in what it means to be a discalced Carmelite friar. It's uh, the, our identity, our charismatic identity, and our, and, and, and our formation are inseparable. And the third section, is a reflection on St. Teresa's understanding of the human person. And it's a particularly very important because we, Teresa tells us that we are a dwelling place of God and that we, this is the basis of the Teresian charism and has great impl implications in how we pray, how we live our daily life and our mission in, in Carmel. The fourth section is probably the most extensive section of the document. It treats of the essential elements of the Teresian charism. And I think there are some significant aspects to this, to this section of the document. The first is the importance of friendship, that friendship with Jesus Christ is the basis of the Teresian charism. And in, in addition to that is fraternity, how we live as brothers together, that we're called to be good friends of Christ and good friends of one another uh, at the service of the church. And then there's the, the element of mental prayer, which is so basic at the very heart of the Teresian charism, and also a mission. St. Teresa was an apostolic soul, so we have a very particular mission in the church today. The final section treats of unity and pluralism. We are aware that the order has expanded into different cultures, and the way that we live the charism is different in different parts of the world. Yet we need to keep in mind the importance of unity. The, the plurality of our order reveals the richness of our charism. On the other hand, we need to keep in mind that we're all brothers together in the order of Carmel and that we belong to the same order and that we work towards unity even though we honor diversity. Therefore, my brothers, as I said, the Charismatic Declaration attempts to reformulate the essential elements of the Teresian charism in the light of the historical context of our time. It's a document, as I said, that calls for careful reading, serious reflection, and sharing with one another at the provincial chapters, uh, adding your suggestions, and even your critiques. We hope that it will be a source of renewal for you and for the province and for the order as a whole. God bless you.